All right. Hello and welcome, everybody, to the Finding Dory teaser trailer hangout discussion. We're going to go through and kind of break down some of the moments from today's exciting first reveal of the teaser trailer, which premiered on Ellen Tube. Uh, we're going to go through some questions and comments that people had. We're going to kind of have some other reactions and some things that we're seeing. We're also going to do a level set of the news of what we know through from 2013 through today and kind of highlight some of those different uh, news stories along the way to make sure that everybody's on the same page for what we know about Finding Dory. So just saying hello myself, I am TJ. I'm Julie. And of course we are Pixar Post. If you have questions along the way as we discuss this, we would love to talk about them with you. You can ask a question if you're watching directly on Google+. Plus. Right in the side window, we will answer them there. You can ask a question on Twitter using the hashtag FindingDoryPP for Pixar Post. And Julie will be monitoring those questions. Or email us. That's generally where we get most of the questions. Or email at info at PixarPost.com. And we will also be monitoring if you leave a comment directly in YouTube. Boy, there's a lot of ways you can get in contact. So we certainly hope that you reach out and uh, have some input as far as for today's uh, teaser trailer discussion. I've also already got pages of notes of people's comments uh, regarding uh, what they've left, either a comment on our post or in the forum. So we've got uh, plenty to talk about today. And of course, we are always joined by special guests. And today we are joined, of course, by none other than Dan, the Pixar fan. So say hello, Dan. Hello, everyone, once again. Yes, yes, and Dan is uh, facing some inclement weather in his area, so if for some reason his internet puts, <laughs> we'll see what happens. And if you want to, if you do jump off for some reason and, if, and you feel like it comes back or whatever, feel free to jump back on. We'll just keep picking right back up. You got it. Um, and then I'll come back over to you in a second, Dan, but also we are joined by a new guest to the Hangout world. We are joined by none other than Jonathan Carlin. And say hello, Jonathan. Hey, Guys, my name is uh, Jonathan Carlin. I uh, run the Super Carlin Brothers YouTube channel. We talk a lot about uh, Pixar and the Pixar theory and stuff like that, so I'm excited <laughs> to be here. Fantastic, and we're excited uh, to welcome you into the fold, and uh, you guys met, you and Julie met at uh, the, the Good Dinosaur press event, so that was a great connection to finally make there. Yeah, no, so exciting. I, I met her, and she's like, oh, I'm, I'm with Pixar Post. And I was like, oh, my God, I love that website. And she's like, yeah, it's just me and my husband. And I was like, so you're like, you are Pixar Post. That's <laughs> even, gosh, this is even better. Cool. <laughs> well, I guess... Well, then we were talking about his YouTube channel, and he was telling me how many subscribers he has, and he has... They have the... Uh, the silver button, and I was like, what? You knew. <laughs> so we were, the two of us were geeking out for like the whole like day and a half that we were there, two days that we were there. Pretty much were, yeah. It was, it was great. I think everyone else is like such like a, like a veteran of the press junket world, and I feel like you and I were like, no, this is Pixar. This is exciting. <laughs> <laughs> it absolutely is super exciting. So fantastic, and welcome again. Dan, as always, uh, give us your little 20-second pitch about your site and what you do as well, because obviously we love your site too. All right, yeah. I'm, uh, well, I run DanThePixarFan.com. I am a lifelong Pixar mega fan, and my blog is dedicated to my personal collection of Pixar toys, collectibles, memories, things like that. And uh, basically I do a post a day with an item from my collection so that people out there, fans like you, can know about some cool stuff out there. So look for that at DanThePixarFan.com. Absolutely, absolutely. And I should also say, Jonathan, for your standpoint, how do people find you and uh, your YouTube channel and posts? Sure. Uh, uh, just go to YouTube and search for Super Carlin Brothers or uh, YouTube.com slash Super Carlin Brothers. And uh, if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's at John Carlin. Uh, there you go. So yeah, and and your Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and all that for me as well. So <laughs> <laughs> all right, Dan, take it easy. It's not a competition. <laughs> Just saying, it's all there. It's all there. Yeah, <laughs> fantastic. I know uh, all those places. Yep, yep. I'm gonna kick back over to the Q and A on here in case anybody says anything. If you're if you're out there and watching online as well, we'd love to hear from you. Feel free to uh, just say a hello as well. I can certainly see we've got quite a few viewers that are watching along live. Um, so just say hello and let us know you're out there. All right. So let's get down to this. Let's get down to some business, huh? 
All right, right so the Finding Dory tra teaser trailer, and I want to keep putting teaser in front of there because it wasn't an official trailer where we're talking like... Two it wasn't an official full-length trailer. Right, it's the teaser. It's two and a half minutes or anything like that. It's the first little teaser. So minute and 42 seconds, including the... In uh, the beginning, where it talks about the rating and all that kind of stuff, all the way through the end, um, the clip itself. Uh, and Dan, you were at the D twenty three Expo this year. The clip itself was this part of what was shown at that at the expo. Yes. Part the of whole it. the whole thing, or just a little snippet of it. No, we actually saw the, that the sleep talking or the sleep swimming scene that we see in this teaser. It's just a snippet of the entire scene that we saw at D23. It maybe was two or three minutes long, the scene that we saw. Okay, yeah, and we did see some other uh, people on uh, Twitter that were saying, darn it, I was at the expo, and I happened to see that already. So yeah. they were hoping for a little more. But it certainly did capture audiences' uh, attention. Uh, if you check Twitter, it was pretty much a, a worldwide trending topic throughout the entire day. Yeah. Uh, it was everybody was getting retweets and favorites, and it was going absolutely bonkers. Uh, and right from the beginning of the trailer, which we'll show some clips of here and kind of walk through it as we get down into this a little more, but right at the beginning of it, I want to get some initial reactions as we start to hear that opening music, the Thomas Newman score of the main title, Nemo Egg. Uh, so, Dan, what were your first thoughts when this first fades in and you start seeing and hear, seeing Marlin and Nemo and Dory and then you hear the, the main theme? Well, you know me, I've, I've mentioned it before. I love film scores. I love especially Pixar film scores. Um, Finding Nemo is just gorgeous. I love the tranquility of that score. And when it fades in and you see the reef, it has that classic Nemo kind of tranquil feel that, I've, that I love from the film. And I think that it just captured it perfectly. And that was just the best way to start the teaser, in my opinion. Yeah, absolutely. So, Jonathan, from your perspective, I know you did a Periscope earlier, a live broadcast of your reaction to the trailer. So kind of walk through what some of your initial reactions were when it started up. Uh, the, the very first thing I noticed was the music. That was like, um, you know, it's been, what, like 12 years? And, like, you were immediately, you were immediately right back there. It was like, oh, my gosh, I'm back in the reef. And <laughs> Even the reef, like I know, obviously all their animation has gotten like a lot more advanced since then, but it looked it looked the exact same, and it just looked it looked really good. Um, but I think I think the music is what immediately captured me, and I, that that's what I, I like that it was sort of the same score, and um, then that, then I guess it started in the zoom in on Zor Dory and find you know, Nemo and Marlin and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. What did you think when you first saw it, Julie? Um, I, just like you guys, the the familiar tones of the music really, I mean, you know, brought me back, you know, 12 years ago when we were in the theater watching it. Um, I also think, uh, just like you said, Jonathan, that the, the reef looked the same, but we talked about that it's just more polished, it seems. Yeah. The animation, I mean, obviously it's been 12 years. Um, we'll get into, like, the render man and everything, um, the new software that they're using, but it's... It's incredible. Like, it just, it was more realistic. The lighting. Like, yeah, the movement of the, getting the light coming through from the top of the ocean, how it was dispersing and everything. And the movement of the anemone. I always think that bad. <laughs> anemone. Anemone. <laughs> anemone. <laughs> um, I, I thought that, I don't know, it's just, it just brought me back. It, it was really, I, I don't know, it's just hard to describe, like, a, a happy feeling. Yeah, absolutely. And then so, you know, Luis in the forum, um, he said, when the Disney Pixar logo showed up with the original Finding Nemo score, I got teary-eyed just from the nostalgia. And Brennan on Facebook said, is there anything better than Thomas Newman's score? So, I mean, it, it definitely... I wondered how people were going to perceive that, that it's, you know, just putting you right back in there. And definitely it seems like it was extremely well-received. That it was uh, that people jumped right back in and they were like, "Oh, this is great! I love feeling that feeling again." Yeah. So really cool there. Um, I think you have to because I think it's just kind of like the Toy Story trilogy, or soon to be the fourth goal. Fourth <laughs> but, goal. The fourth goal. Great word. <laughs> I'm trademarking that fourth goal. TM. Yeah, fourth goal. <laughs> uh, um, it. Yeah. 
But I think, you know, Randy Newman's, like, those familiar song, you know, tunes right. that, you know, kind of put you back into the toy box, I feel like this is the same thing of putting us back underwater. Yeah. All right, so let's go ahead, and I'm going to actually uh, do a little screen share here, and we're going to start looking at some of the different moments here. So after the, after the credits kind of go, and we start seeing, we're seeing Dory, and she's sleeping in her little hut there right next to the anemone. Uh, we'll zoom forward. So really great lighting here, really nice soft motion in the waves there. All the fun details as you hear, the, see the light going across, just super cool. Yeah. I feel like it must be a full moon out there on that night, right? <laughs> yeah, to be <laughs> a lot of light going through for night. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But it just feels so good. <laughs> It looks, it looks like you've got goggles on, like, under the pool or something. Yeah. yeah. So then you got the nice little reveal here, and here's something that I love from, like, a Andrew Stanton standpoint. You've got his awesome, you've got, and it's not just, I'm sure it's obviously not coming through in high def over the stream here, but in the foreground, you got Nemo and Marlin, and they're just so out of focus, drawing your eye right through the V in the anemone, and, but I love that they're not even in focus still. I love that he's going to keep this, like, his kind of style of real shallow depth of field. At least I'm hoping it stays that way, but you have to assume. Um, swims down. Dory's gone. All right, and then so she's sleep-talking. So let's talk sleep-swimming and talking. So let's talk about that. That was certainly one of the jokes that seemed to be very highly received that was talked about at the Expo. Um, but I guess just what were your thoughts about it, Julie, from the sleep talking, like or sleep, sleep, sleep swimming, swimming and talking and all that kind of stuff, how cool that was. Yeah, I thought that was really interesting, and I also thought it was good to kind of show us this in this teaser because now it puts a little idea in our head, well, is this how she starts swimming out in the ocean? Is this how she goes away from Marlin and Nemo? I don't think so, personally, but I think it kind of leaves that idea into a lot of people's heads. Okay, so Sergio, uh, on our website, he left a comment, and he said, is this how she got lost from her family in the first place? Because, I mean, obviously, you know, we don't know, but it's just an interesting little thing to think about. Did she get lost in the first place? Because she's always been a, a sleep swimmer. Who knows? I don't think so, but he's a I sleep walker, so I thought it was really funny. <laughs> hey, we'll leave my <laughs> sleep walking out of this. <laughs> TJ's going to end up, like, on the other side of the country somehow. Right, yeah. Finding <laughs> Okay, you want a fun story? Funny story. <laughs> like, 15 years ago in our first apartment, um, this one slept, was like, was sleepwalking, out, out, walked outside of our apartment, walked in the middle of the parking lot. I, I walked outside. I full-on opened the door, walked out into the parking lot. You scared? And uh, kind of just was like, what's going on over here? And then she's... Just, what are you doing? Yeah, so I understand Dory. Dory and I get each other. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what were you going to say about that, Jonathan? Because it sounded like you were going to say something about the sleep swimming, too. Oh, no, yeah, I think um, I, I think what I noticed was just not necessarily maybe the swimming. Um, I, I don't think that's how she gets, like, necessarily lost or separated because of something we see later in the trailer. But she says, like, two little lines there, and one is, like, like don't cry, Mommy, I think. And that... Um, like that's such a tiny little line, and it's like such like it sounds like such a throwaway thing, but I think to me it sounds like that's her having a memory, and like she's saying like to call someone mommy means you like you remember that's who they are in your life. So it's like she's having a memory of a time when she had memories. I guess does that make sense? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, so to me that means that like when, maybe when she was like a little fish, she. She didn't have the short-term memory loss, so something happened that like caused this. That 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 was my takeaway from it. Yeah, and almost kind of something viral. traumatic, to make yeah. it seem like she didn't really leave accidentally or on purpose. It's almost like something separated them. Right. Yeah. Like maybe it's like a really repressed thing. Is she yeah. gonna have something similar to how Nemo was kind of taken away by a uh, a fisherman, if you will, or a diver, if you will? I I kind of feel like something like that. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. There was I, I, again. I think there's that. There's a scene at the very at the very end where she's like talking about remembering a clam or a mollusk or something. Yeah, <laughs> right. Yeah, and um, I like it looked like Nemo and Marlin are still with her there, and that looked like they were off the reef at that point. So I wasn't sure if like maybe like uh, 
like how separated she gets from them. Like they're if they're looking for him, or maybe like finding Dory is like finding like herself, kind of. I don't know. But, yeah, or and you know are, are, are her family trying to find her? Mm. Could be that journey. I don't know. Could be that too. Yeah, you're right. It doesn't necessarily have to be like Nemo and Marlin. Well, we do know that her parents are in it because they were announced as vocal cast. Right. Um, so that certainly could mean something in there. I don't think we'll go too far off the, the path of following Dory because she's obviously going to be the main character. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I kind of have something to throw in about when they said the clam and the mollusk. Did <laughs> any of you guys, the only thing I thought of when they were when she was saying that line was when Marlon was trying to do the joke, when he was trying to think of that joke. With a sea cucumber uh, and a mollusk. Yeah. That's the uh, only thing I thought of. That down. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that's the only thing I thought of. So I didn't know if that was kind of a throwback, but like Dory was actually kind of remembering that conversation because she was with Marlin because they were trying to find Nemo. Right. right. Like yeah, like she tried to tell the joke and he's like, nope, 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 and he's mollusk. <laughs> yeah. So that's, totally. That's I, the one that I thought the same thing too. Yeah, that it had that kind of connection. Because as soon as you hear mollusk, because the way that he, that Marlin emotes that when he's like, so this mollusk walks into a bar. Yeah. You know, like you can totally like, you you remember it for yeah, sure. The that's way he, what I the way he punctuates his lines. And it kind of looked like the submarine of where the sharks are, where they were. That was absolutely a a comment that someone brought up as well. Um, that they talked about the fact that um, is that. Are, is this where we're going to all of a sudden see the sharks again? Because it absolutely looked like that greeny, kind of mm -hmm. rusted out metal of the submarine. Yeah. yeah. Even though it blew up. So it could be... <laughs> right. like, yeah, I don't think it's the same, same thing. The sharks, like, show up on the reef at the end of Finding Nemo, right? So. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I wasn't sure if they would, like, remain living there or, yeah, if they would. But they have to have a cameo, right? I mean, it's not yeah. a fun yeah. Nemo with that one. They're going to show up for sure. Yeah. I hope so. At least yeah. Bruce. No, Chum and Anchor knew too. Yeah, all three. Yeah, all do. <laughs> I feel like all three of them. Yeah, and uh, and Crush needs to show up as well. I think they're if gonna bring them all back for something, you know. Yeah. Even, Even the seagulls, I guarantee you, are gonna have their moment in this in the sun right there. Oh, yeah. they better. Oh yeah. They cool. better. Andrew Stanton voices the seagulls Ooh. and Crush. So. Right. Yeah. Done. Yeah. Consider it that. <laughs> crowd favorites. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, so obviously we talked about the animation. It's even more stunning. One of the things that I wanted to point out, and I'm going to go back to the screen share real quick, because I wanted to point out when... So he's pulling... Marlin is pulling Dory back here. He's whisking her away. And as he's in this moment here, you start to see... Look at the reflection that are coming off yep. the, the scales. Mm -hmm. I mean, that is absolutely ridiculous as far as the detail improvement over the last film. And this is something I wanted to highlight from the animation side of it because I went back and I put in the Blu-ray for Finding Nemo and just went through... I looked for scenes that were very similar to that where I would see almost a little ray of light going across Marlin as he turned and went through it, and there is a definite improvement in this area. So we have the last time that we saw Marlin, he looks like he's still his normal shape, but it looks like he almost has like a surface laid on him with color underneath it and some like that, the scaly top surface. This actually legitimately looks like he has individual scales that are individually reflecting and refracting the light. Where before he... it was kind of like a gummy bear with, with light glowing. Right. Yeah, absolutely. It's a definite improvement, um, and it's something that um, you know we wanted to get into a little bit. And so I guess I'll just jump there real quick. <laughs> um, so it kind of came up with Mr. Petey in the forum asked, "Have they worked on the lighting from the top of the ocean a bit more since Finding Nemo? Watching it, I feel like the animation methods have changed and grown." And so Untold Story a user Untold Stories 113 was at Annecy in France. Um, so this uh, next little bit that I put together here is kind of a combination of her experiences from Annecy as well as what we had read and, and seen in different uh, uh, clips from that. So uh, she chimed in saying that, uh, an explanation, Dylan Sisson uh, spoke about the new pipelines and workflows on behalf of RenderMan at Annecy. 
Uh, this is the first film to use RIS, which stands for Renderman Integrator System. We're getting very geeky at the moment. <laughs> uh, which leads to a better rendering of the fish through subs subsurface scattering and better use of indirect lighting optimized mode for, render uh, for rendering global illumination, which we know that, they, that Pixar kind of turned the lights on for global illumination at Monsters University. Uh, previous films have used Reyes, uh, which stands for renders everything you, you've ever seen. So this one is the first one for RIS. Um, and it was redesigned and written from the ground up to optimize global illumination. So you can definitely, already from this little teeny teaser trailer, you can already see the improvements that have come about. Of course, you'd expect there to be improvements in technology from 2003, but it definitely came across. Um, you know, Dan, what, what did you think when you saw the animation side of it? Yeah, I do have some thoughts on that. Uh, I've actually had the, the same thought since since I did see the D23 footage, and that is, though we know that there is improvements, obviously, over the last 12 years, that's just inevitable. It's going to look even better than the original, all the things that you're talking about. But, when, but you really notice that when you pause it, when you analyze it, the average viewer, I think, a lot of times wouldn't actually gauge that, how much of a difference there really is. And I thought that between Monsters, Inc. and Monsters University, there's a tremendous difference in the way that those movies look and the texture of the monsters. Just the whole feeling kind of looks so much different. If you look between Toy Story and Toy Story 3, same thing. The texture of the humans, the texture of, of, of the environment, so different. And what I've noticed from this sequel is I feel like it looks more similar to the original, even though there has been improvements than the other sequels that have been done. Um, just throwing that out there. I was wondering if you felt the same way. You know, it's funny is I didn't think about it in that perspective, kind of lining the timelines up, but you're absolutely right. I've always seen the biggest disconnect in my mind between Monsters, Inc. and Monsters, U. Mm -hmm. um, those two were, I mean, drastic. They were a complete world of difference. Well, yeah. it's because Global Illumination was discussed a lot for Monsters University when I went there for the press days. And I know you just talked about that there. But the vibrancy of the colors in MU rather than uh, Monsters, Inc. Oh, yeah. Everything, everything was drastic. And you're right. There was... When Nemo came out in 2003, that was, I mean, absolutely groundbreaking itself. Everybody walked away from that saying they could not believe the realism that they were seeing in theaters of these yeah. fish and the underwater how the, Especially uh, the whale remember the whale scene with the in, in the with the tongue in the water? Remember how real that looks? Oh Even, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. So I think that you're right about that for sure. Um, from our perspective, you're right. We're picking up on those more <laughs> nuances uh, like the particles, which we'll yeah. get to. Yes, yes. <laughs> but, you know, between Cars and Cars 2, there wasn't a huge gap there. Not not anything like there has been between, like, this and, and Nemo or Monsters, Inc. and University or Toy Story. And, and there was more of a smaller gap there, so it, it was similar animation. This, since there was such a big gap, I was so surprised and, and glad that it had that same feel rather than it being much of a drastic change, even though technology has advanced. Yeah, absolutely. Um, kind of shifting gears a little bit from the technology side of it, I'm interested to hear Jonathan's take on Nemo's voice. Uh, is this the first time that you've heard his newer voice, or have you heard anything from the expo when they originally kind of premiered that? Uh, no, this is the first time I was hearing Nemo's uh, new voice. I had, I had heard some interview somewhere that he, it might have even been just talking to Julie, that... Um, that Nemo's had a new voice actor for this movie, but that they really that they really lined it up. And I think I think because I knew it, I was able to like like listen for it. Um, but I, I don't think if I ha if I didn't know, I don't think I would have been able to tell. I think they, whoever they cast, I, I, I feel stunned not knowing the, the names of the actors. But um, it, it sounds like spot on. And like like maybe you might expect a fish to have maybe like aged a little in six months. <laughs> Fish grow a little faster than humans, I guess. So. <laughs> a little deeper voice for Nemo. Yeah. Uh, not much, not much. It's a little different. You know, he yeah. years. Hey, man, what's up? I'm going to go swim <laughs> over by Marlin. I know, I know, I know. But, uh, um, so, yeah, the original actor was a Alex Gould, and this one is Hayden Rollins, who's going to be picking up the role here. 
And Dan, I'm gonna here. This is gonna be weird. I'm gonna quote you from our forum. <laughs> so you had said in, in your write-up after you got back from the expo, you said, if I didn't know any better, I would have thought it was the original actor. Um, and I think you had said, you know, if you really pay attention, you can really call it out. But for, again, the average viewer and for, I guess, just overall satisfaction, you were completely satisfied with it? I was very satisfied. I, I was excited after that. Um, I remember I tweeted it out. I wrote in the forum just to let everyone know, hey, don't worry, they nailed it. <laughs> Because I was I was happy with it because Nemo had such a distinct voice and he had such a way about the way that he talked that was that was so him that I was kind of worried that how are they going to capture that the personality of that kid who played him again um, and obviously we heard a lot more dialogue from Nemo than than what we saw in this teaser and so even more so I was I was more and more impressed the more that I heard it and they really captured his little quirks in the way he talks. Um, or the kid. I don't know if the kid studied how Nemo talked from the original, or or what they did there, what the process was. But um, but they but he really nailed it. So I was happy. Yeah, I hope there is maybe like a a special feature on the Blu-ray, or if we see some behind the scenes before the movie comes out, that they that they talk about that casting and and finding Hayden to to fill that role because it definitely yeah. is something that. I feel like the nuances are there, like you said. You know, whether he studied him or you know how they figured that out, it was it was a, a really nice matching. Yeah, and you know, sometimes Nemo has that little stutter. I even feel like they even captured that. I don't know if you heard it so much here, but but more with the clips that we saw, he even had that that little way that he went about talking. Like he has that little stutter that he does sometimes. Um, also, I had another. Another point. I was going to say, kind of kind of what was said before, is that even if we do hear little differences, and I know that we will because it is a different person, that I think that we can just assume, hey, time has passed, and voices change a little bit as time passes. So I think we can justify it in that way as well if we do end up picking up little things that don't quite sound the same. I know what we can do. We can stick it on the refrigerator. Or refrigerator it. <laughs> What's it called? Okay, so yeah, it was a it was a refrigerator question. So yeah. it was a thing that it was a thing that I had told Julie about. Uh, it had come up at the Toy Story twentieth anniversary discussion that happened uh, about a week, two weeks ago or so in San Francisco, and they were talking about uh, the comparison how Buzz Lightyear knew. How did he know in his body somehow when Andy showed up that he had to freeze? So it was a whole thing where they talk about writing it good enough, just getting it good enough that you don't think about it when you're watching the movie, but later on that night when you're at home, you've put the kids to bed, you're about to go grab something out of the refrigerator, you go, hey, wait, wait a minute, wait a why second. doesn't he? So it's like... <laughs> and then it keeps up at night. Yeah, so they call it a refrigerator question. So it's, uh, I guess we'll call this a refrigerator voice, where somebody might go, wait a minute, was he different? <laughs> I have a lot of those. And and, and then I, because every, every movie, no matter how perfect the story is, they all have things where unanswered questions and things about the world that maybe don't add up because you don't know enough about it. But I can always usually find some way to justify a a seemingly, you know, a, a, a plot hole or a a inconsistency. I can usually find a way to justify that in my mind after like writing it out because it bugs me. I'm like that when I hear a story or when I watch a movie or hear a story and I see little inconsistencies, I try to fill the gaps with my mind. I don't know if you do the same thing. Oh, dude, that's what my whole channel is about. <laughs> that's that's what I'm making my living on right now is trying to come up with the answers to those questions. And when well, I think about yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, like, I'm sure there are answers to a lot of those little, like, plot things. Like, um, like one of the things they talked about for the good dinosaur, like, I'm sure people are going to go home and be like, how did the dinosaurs build that house? And it's like, no, they told us, like, no, they imagined how could they move this log there and how could they move this rock and would they wrap their neck around it or push it? And it's like, you're not going to be explained that, but they thought about it and it's yeah, real. So. They showed us sketches of that. Yeah, they, they had sketches of, like, here's Arlo bending his neck and <laughs> and that's one of my favorite things about audio commentaries and special features is that sometimes they answer a question that's been looming for years. Um, like, like Inside Out, I was so excited for the commentary because I knew he would probably touch on some things that we all wonder, you know, about the world that they created that they don't necessarily explain. 
And he even, it wasn't a lot, but he touched on two or three things in there that explained some things. So um, it's always fun to hear the official stance on what went through their minds as they, as they created these rules and these worlds. Yeah. So one of the things that we talked about, obviously when we were talking about Nemo's voice, is that distance of him aging a little bit. And just to level set, because one of the questions that came in as well from uh, Sergio is he said, when, will Nemo still be small? When will it take pr place? So you guys are going to have to keep me honest here. Um, I believe we've heard anywhere, I know we've heard anywhere from a few months past Finding Nemo to a year. So I know Jim Morris had said it was about a year after. I know I've heard even a few months. So it's within that time frame. Have you guys heard anything else more specific than that? You know, I, I did, <laughs> but now I can't remember exactly what it yeah. was. I thought you were but I remember. But uh, yeah, I, could, I couldn't source it for you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, okay, so we're in but that same range. Though, you're somewhere in there. You're, you're not right. right. We, we know we're within a couple months to a yeah. year, somewhere within there. I say seven and a half months. Oh, she's throwing it down. I'm going to write it down. Seven and a half months, Julie says. <laughs> we'll go for a year. We can justify the voice change more with that. Seven, seven, and, a half seven and a half months right there. <laughs> we'll say it's mid-August. Watch, watch it opens. The film opens, and it says, like, seven and a half months later. <laughs> no. What? I'd be like, I told you guys. <laughs> That's when we would know you saw something when you were at the studio. Right. You've been oh, tracking cloud fish broke for like years now. Yeah. So, <laughs> all the stuff Julie knows that she hasn't told you, man. I know. All these secrets. All these secrets. <laughs> all right, let's take a look at some more moments from the trailer here as well. So we've got Marlon dragging Dory back in. He goes back into the anemone. He says, "He says, uh, you know, hey Nemo, this is going to be a one-time thing only." They look back. Uh, she is, of course, zooming off now at this point. This is my favorite part of the trailer. So this is where I wanted to get to. So I was kind of jumping by that last part. So let's. I'm going to advance through some of these uh, scenes here. So tell me, why is this? A favorite. The sand, the effect on the sand. I'm I'm coming to real, to realize that not only do I love the story department, um, except I can't draw amazing like those story artists, but the effects department is like blows my mind. Um, the effect done on the sand from when Dory like shoots up right. is absolutely incredible and one of the fa my favorite things from this trailer. Ah, oh, fantastic. I think it's beautiful. Okay. Uh, did that catch any of your guys' eyes, whether that be Jan Dan or Jonathan? Man, the sand didn't. That little moon glimmer on Marlin earlier did. I'm glad you mentioned that, but I did not notice the sand. Yeah, <laughs> the sand. Okay. I noticed all the specks in the water. <laughs> that's a nice... Okay, so that's one of the things I am most excited for, because I loved that in the you first movie. You were about specks. Oh, believe me. I told... <laughs> So I'm I'm gonna I'm ending screen share for a second because I got to talk about this. So <laughs> I got to talk about. So this. in when we saw Wally in the theater, I remember leaning over to Julie and saying, "This is ridiculous. Do you see the dust in the air?" And she was like, "Yeah, but who cares right now?" <laughs> and it was. I just loved it. The parts where you would see Wally's face zoom way into his cockroach friend, and you would just see this almost just razor thin line of focus from the shallow depth of field, and you see this awesome dust coming down. Mm -hmm. And I just I just put the two together because it's obviously Andrew Stanton and Andrew Stanton. I love the particles in the ocean. I love the dust in the air for Wally. I can't get enough of it, and I cannot wait to see how they uh, tweaked it to see if it's uh, changed or improved or whatever they're going to do to it. I love all that little, the little details like that. And Someone Dan, st <laughs> stop making fun of me, Dan. No, 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 I'm not. Just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking like someone that's passionate about the particles should be in that department. That's where you should be working towards. <laughs> you should be a particle guy at Pixar. Well, okay, so you know, what my, you know what my real weakness is. My re real weakness is the lighting department. I don't know. I'm, I'm hearing a lot of love for the part of it. A lot of dust. <laughs> you love the dust. You love the bubbles. You love the debris. You probably love the smoke. You love the fog. Oh, see, effects. All right, I like the effects, too. Take it easy, people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so now we get to the next little scene here. We get to, we get to see some old friends. 
we've got one of my favorites. I don't know if my mouse will come up here as well, but you've got the little buck tooth fish. Oh my God, Nemo's swimming into the ocean! And <laughs> so you've got that. You've got Mr. Ray. You've got Tad. You've got a whole bunch of them. I was excited to see these characters again. Yeah. So are they all recast? Because they were they were played by kids too, right? The little fish. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. 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 So so we're we're gonna ha- they're gonna have. Uh, quite a few new voices there that they're going to have to try to match or that they have tried to match. Right. So yet again, we'll get another Bob Peterson. Uh, of course, the voice of... Let's m- name the zones. The zones. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be interesting to see how all these like secondary and side characters that had little screen time in the first make their way back into this one as well. Yeah. yeah. I hope he sings again. <laughs> yeah. yes. Oh, absolutely. He better, he better sing again. <laughs> I hope that's how they kind of like welcome him back into the scene. Is almost like he's singing into the scene. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I can see that. They, they got to match the catchiness of the last one, though. That was great. Right. Well, Julie like, got it down. Oh boy. All right. So that re- seeing those characters reminds me. There was another question that kind of came in that said, "I read that Willem Dafoe is going to be back to voice oh. Bill. Uh, what do we think for the rest of the Tank Gang?" And so, yes, back in October 2013, there was an interview with Total Film where Willem Dafoe said he was returning. He said, yes, I've already started. It's even better than the first. It's fantastic. Wow. Um, what did you hear at the expo? Did you hear anything else, Dan, about the Tank Gang? They didn't talk about the Tank Gang at all, actually. But I do remember that interview with William, and, and it's also assumed that they will show up. My personal opinion is that I don't think they're going to have a, a huge part in this, because there's so many characters from the original that that it seems like they're going to come back for little cameos, but that would be a lot of characters to bring back fully again. I think they're going to be focusing on on the new characters, mostly, that they've revealed so far. That's, yeah, just, kinda, that's just speculation, though. Yeah, I kind of feel like they're going to do that kind of, too. They're going to kind of have to just wash over some of the others, because there's so many. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there really is. I mean, even down to the little school kids here with Mr. Ray. Right. Yeah, they're absolutely. Trying. And if anything, I would even say that the Tank Gang is even going to have even a smaller bit than Mr. Ray, than the other kids, or even the sharks, because just the tank. Well, actually, no. No, they're, but... in, the, they're in the ocean. <laughs> so I kind of, I mean, I hope we get just get like a, a glimpse of them. Yeah. And I, yeah. Hope we, I hope we at least see Jacques. I don't want him to speak, but I just want him to kind of be wandering It'll be interesting to see how they handle that, because obviously uh, Joe Ramp did the voice for that, um, Bro, right, yeah. who has since passed away. So yeah. it'll be interesting to see how they can do, we, oui, it is clean. You know, like <laughs> if they're going to do anything. But I hope I, we get, like, a, a chance just to see them. And then I also hope that we see the Boston Lobsters. Oh. <laughs> So, uh, you know, I, that kind of pays homage to Andrew Stanton living in, uh, growing up in Massachusetts. Right. So I hope that happens again. Well, um, they could have, as, going back to Jacques, they could have uh, had a lot of archived, maybe unused takes that they could maybe True. squeeze a, a little take in there or two of dialogue that never made it into the movie. That would be kind of cool. Yeah. yeah. I, don't, I don't know. It would kind of feel weird. Maybe. <laughs> but um, also, I was wondering, going back to the Tank King, though, uh, since they went out, out the, the dentist's office at the end, they, they went into the, the ocean, and they're in their bags. How, I wonder, how would they find the reef? That would be a movie in itself, finding the reef, finding Nemo and Marlin. You know, like, they're so far away from the reef. I wonder how, if they are all together, how that all transpired how they all got together. I got an answer for you. Oh, all right. Refrigerator. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Let's hear it. <laughs> it's a refrigerator. It's just going to happen. You're going to be like, well, how did they get there? And then we'll have to d- subscribe to uh, Jonathan's YouTube channel to figure out why. That's right. I'll, I'll be on oh, the Oh, the refrigerator is the answer. Right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I thought, you uh, uh, really uh, know? I know. <laughs> Come on. Okay. I'll, I'll, I'll accept that answer. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, I'm like, did they get put in the refrigerator? Oh, no. <laughs> I'm, I'm kidding. I'm obsessed I'm with kidding. that now. I know. I know. You, you, yeah, when I talked to you hey, about that. That's a valid question, though, because they were pretty far away. Yeah, still in the bags, too. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, Thanks well, you know, for your channel. Well, you know, Bloat was in one of those bags, so all he would have had to do is bloat, bloat right? Yeah, yeah. He's, he's one freak out away. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, one freak out away. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, he could do that, and then they could keep getting him to, like, get, you know, freaked out and, you know, pop open the other bags, or, you know, who knows? We, we shall Maybe see. Maybe they'll still be in the bags after all this time. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. Floating, <laughs> floating in the ocean, and then they find them, at, like, along their journey, they're just still floating there. <laughs> Could, well, could maybe, be a funny gag. Could be a funny uh, gag. I think it would be a funny gag for um, Deb because Deb can only see flow through a reflection. So if Deb's in the ocean without something to reflect, she can't see flow anymore. That would be a funny gag if Deb was still in a bag. Okay, so maybe not even even if they're not all in the bag, I want one of them in the bag at least. <laughs> want her in the bag at least. <laughs> and then it's up to and then it's up to one of them to, to bust them out of the bag. That would be pretty funny. <laughs> but then people are going to be like, well, she's been in a bag for so long, there's no oxygen. Uh, eh, refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> so now, now you're okay with it. I would just yeah. say, eh, refrigerator. <laughs> Dan's just using it for everything now. He's just like, fine, refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, you totally just saved my life. I'm not even going to worry about movie plots anymore. I'm just going to totally put it past me. I'm just going to not worry about it. Just refrigerator. Yep. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> All right, so let's take a look at some more moments here uh, as we zoom through. We've got Disney Pixar Presents. Then she's going through, and she's starting to have this realization that, oh, my God, my family! And she goes tearing off here. Somebody's like, wow, she swims in turbo mode. Huh. Uh, so then, no speed. Like, that was like fish warp speed. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so I did you know, I did uh, want to say that she they did... Uh, with her and Marlin, they flew through those jellyfish there for a while when they were having their race. So, you know, maybe. So this oh, was yeah. another This was another line that was the probably the one that was commented on the most on our forum. Uh, was about an unforgettable adventure uh, that she, she'll, she probably won't remember. So I think that was one that got a lot of laughs. I didn't really. You know, it's funny, as I almost kind of thought like, okay, yeah, ha ha. But for some, that one got a ton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, people, people love that. Yeah. I, I was more like you, TJ. I was like, eh. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, a little chuckle in my mind. So here, so here's an awesome one showing yeah. just an incredible view. Yeah, so that's a classic, it. classic Finding Nemo angle right there. So just go ahead. Yeah, exactly. I was going to say it's a perfect throwback to what they've done before. But go ahead and just watch right here in this area where I'm circling with my mouse, and you'll notice the in the lower right where the particles oh, are moving. Particles. Look, at the, look at those particles. <laughs> Dude, now I'm going to watch this, and I'm just going to be looking at the particles. You won't be seeing anything. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> the particles. But I love, like, the you've got the light coming down. You can see details in the sand, even though it's... You know, not just the reflections off the light. You get the reflections below all three. Uh, Nemo, Dory, and Marlin as they're swimming there. Vibrant, ridiculous colors in the ocean. And then this screenshot was the other one that I posted in the forum, too, because this one is where I pulled up uh, an image of Marlin from the first movie and compared it to this one, and what a difference in his face again. Small details for most other people, uh, for the casual viewer, I should say, um, but definitely in his forehead area, where he's got his kind of bunched up, almost mm -hmm. makeshift eyebrows here. Those almost look like they're more like you're pushing and pulling a clay, like it's more putty in the first movie. This, as they move, is definitely much more seamless and integrated into his body. You can definitely tell that the character rig was updated and has some more, it, it appears, more controls in there. Um, really a lot more smoother around his eyes and in his mouth and everything. I was definitely just loving the extra detail. And to the left of the screen here, you've got some uh, awesome floating particles, Dan. Really? Wow. <laughs> I didn't notice those, so I guess it hasn't ruined it for me. <laughs> Uh, did you, I should uh, before I move on. Did you, Julie, have anything that you saw either either in like this last kind of? Um, you know what? No, I I continue to be blown away by the animators when they animate fish, um, for you know Nemo, and now Dory. But um, the way when they talk, what? So if you see when he talks and he kind of goes up, both of his fins kind of go for it. I don't know. I just feel like 
it's so realistic. It's a realistic movement, but how do you even animate that? So you, the, the studies that they've done with just watching videos of fish. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's really paid off. Right, because they're animating parts of Marlin that aren't even seen by him. So as his tail even goes behind him right here, they're not even. I mean, they're animating this in complete three D. So they're animating that, not knowing which direction. Andrew Stanton, well, they have a general idea. Well, but, and the fins on top of his head where it's just kind of moving. I don't know. Yeah, I, yeah. I, it's phenomenal. It's mm -hmm. fantastic. It's great movement. It's great motion and things that, you know, they have to to figure out as they go. It's just really great. I see more particles. <laughs> Those particles, are these the little, like, corals on the back? And these, yeah, the little corals on the back here, it looks like they're forming or the little, I, I, I don't know what they officially are. Maybe. Barnacles? Either way. Could be. I guess. But th yeah, this is the scene that somebody was saying earlier in the forum. Right. Uh, like, hey, is this like uh, the submarine or anything? Where we've obviously got his uh, joke or the joke of the mollusk kind of coming down. <laughs> oh, the look on Marlon's face here. Mm. Yeah, just so, just. Uh, I'm just so tired of this. <laughs> so this is where it makes me feel like this is like in the total, and it's got to be right, the total heart of the journey. Yeah, I feel. I feel like this is like in the middle of wherever they're going. Right. Yeah. So do you think Nemo and Marlin are going that long with them, with her? Absolutely. I think so. Yeah. I, I mean, I think at some point she'll have to get separated from them. I feel like uh, there's been, like, screenshots of her, like, talking to the octopus, like, um, in, in, in a tank. And I, I, I guess at that point she's separated, but maybe, maybe they're not. Maybe they're, like, in separate tanks in the same room or something, and that's just the picture we've seen. Um, That'll be interesting to see for sure. Um, I don't know. Did they shed any more light on that as far as at the expo? Yeah, uh, Dory is at that facility on her own, and in, in the room where she's in the tank with the octopus, that whole conversation. That's um, Dory um, all by herself there in that room. So I don't know where Marlon or Nemo is at that point. Okay. Well, so yeah, maybe they do. But they're. It does, definitely seems like they're going to be a big part of the movie. From this, it seems like they're together at least some of the time. So, and, yeah. and I hope so. I hope I hope that we still get a lot of uh, Marlon and Nemo because they they are such a huge part of of the heart and the feel of the first movie. And I hope we still see quite a bit of them as well. Yeah, I I would really I do hope we get to see more Marlon and Nemo because like the whole movie is like the whole first one's like about them, but they're not actually together for very much of the movie. And that should be. Good point. Good point. Yeah. So see them see, together. Yeah, like interact on the demo together more. Yeah. See how their relationship is at this point. Mm -hmm. Right. See, I could go either way. I'd be happy if it was, and I think I'd be happy if it wasn't. All right. Yeah, I don't really have any thoughts on that myself. There you go. So I, I think a lot of people have problems with like with 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 the sequels that Pixar has done with Toy Story. They really focused on Woody the entire time. That was his story. That was his arc throughout the movies. Um, mm -hmm. with, with Cars 2, they focused on the secondary funny character. With, with Monsters University, they focused on the secondary funny character. And now with this, they're focusing on the, the, <laughs> the secondary funny character. And so it, it, it obviously, generally, with the general public, it didn't work good with Cars 2. It got better with Monsters University, and I hope that they go more along the lines of the Toy Story route to keep that arc going with the, with everybody instead of focusing too much on just on just one individual on just on just the the side character, if that makes right. sense. Yeah, right. I totally agree. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk and let's level set with some of the other characters that we know about that are out there. So obviously we know Dory, Nemo, Marlin. We've seen some of the other pictures, Mr. Ray, the other characters that are coming in there. We've heard from Willem Dafoe that Gil will be back. Some of the new characters that we've heard along the way between the Expo and some other events that Jim Morris, Pixar's president, was talking at. We've heard that Destiny is a whale shark voiced by Caitlin Olson, who's a whale shark that's a bad swimmer and doesn't want to be associated with sharks since they're scary and instead wants to associate with the whale portion of her name even though she technically is a shark. So that's going to be a, a nice little fun connection there. We also have Bailey, uh, the beluga whale, who is voiced by Ty Burrell. So excited about this. Oh, I know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I know. He's such an awesome uh, actor and voice actor because he's got such a great voice. Yes, he is 
it's a phenomenal voice, a very good character actor. Right. Yep, so he's a uh, blue whale who thinks he has a head injury. Uh, we have Hank the Octopus, a.k.a. a septopus. Octopus, right, yeah. Missing an arm. <laughs> um, so he's a, voiced by Ed O'Neill, also of Modern Family fame, a cantankerous octopus who was born in captivity. So we obviously know that's where he meets up with uh, Dory. What a perfect voice for that description. <laughs> so perfect. <laughs> yeah, Absolutely. And then we've got Dory's mom, who's uh, named Jenny, voiced by Diane Keaton. We've got Dory's dad, uh, whose name is Charlie, boy, voiced by Eugene Levy. Love. Uh, there was one other mention, and Dan, I don't know if you saw anything about this at the expo, uh, but from a... Jim Morris mentioned this at the December 2014 Comic-Con ex experience in Brazil about a mention of sea lions. Did you see or hear anything about sea lions? I don't know, but my cat just jumped up, so it's just, like, reversed over here, because that's usually you. Fantastic! Yeah, I don't know where Monster is. She's usually always making an experience. Uh, oh, they didn't here. mention anything about sea otters, but... Um, sea lions. Or sea, or, or sea lions. Um, <laughs> either way. But, but something I was going to touch on kind of in regards to that is I'm so excited to see new ocean critters and creatures, because... There's so many in the ocean. There's so many creatures out there, and there's so many cool ones. And Nemo just barely scratched the surface. We had jellyfish. We had an anglerfish. We had sharks. But there are so many. Like, we didn't even have an octopus in the original Nemo. Now we have an octopus. We have a beluga whale. And I'm excited to see all the other ones that, uh, that will, might show up, including sea lions. Mm. <laughs> there was a uh, there was a request on the forum that somebody was crossing their fingers that they really wanted to see a manatee as well. So yeah, yeah, I guess or, or a, a narwhal. A narwhal. That is exactly <laughs> what I was gonna see. Man, that is what I wanted. There was a narwhal. <laughs> I, I could totally picture that in a Pixar movie. I could totally right? picture that. Movie. Right. Except I'm the really only the only thing I think of is. Good luck, buddy, finding your dad. Good From luck, Elf. Good luck to find your dad. Right. That's what it looks like, basically. Only <coughs> desk. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But, yeah, I, I can't wait to see all the new uh, the new creatures in, in the movie. That They could go on forever. I mean, it's endless, really. Yeah. Right. And, in fact, mentioning your, uh, as far as the critters and characters and everything, a question just came through on... Uh, Google as well, where they said, what are your thoughts about the number of new characters for Finding Dory? Will it be too many to introduce? So yeah, I, I think Nemo had an absolute ton of characters, mm -hmm. so it'll be interesting to see how they handle it in this one as well, because obviously, I mean, we had so many different groups. We had the Tank Gang, we had Nigel with the Seagulls, and the, our, our, with the Pelicans and Seagulls, and all these different layers. It will be interesting, but I honestly, you know, in Andrew, in Andrew Stanton and the story team, I trust that they're going to definitely nail this and not overdo us as far as the number of questions that uh, are, are characters that they introduce. They're going to certainly handle it well. Yeah. yeah. As far I think, as... Oh. Okay, yeah, I, I would think that um, as long as they don't focus too much on the, like, the characters from the last movie, that it won't be too overwhelming. And, like, in the last movie, there were a ton of characters, but, like, each each new set of characters was sort of, like, like just uh, the next part of the journey, and then they just sort of faded into the back of the movie. They didn't, like, pop up again. So you had, like, the Nemo school at the beginning, and then they were kind of gone. And then you had, you know, the sharks, and then they were gone. And then the sea turtles, and then they were gone. And you sort right. of kept shooting over to the tank gang and stuff, but they weren't, like, integral to, like, the entire plot, so. And then they all showed up at the end, which was right. Nice. Time with a bow. <laughs> yeah. And I think that's kind of, that's how it'll go as well, too, because, I mean, obviously, I think we're going to have the journey from the reef to the Institute somehow, um, and we're going to have those characters that we're going to meet there. There'll be certainly characters that we meet along the journey there. However, <clears throat> she gets in there, there'll be some humans, probably. It'll, it'll keep going around and around, but I definitely don't think it'll be too many. I think they'll certainly be able to handle it. Okay, question. Um... I've heard this kind of talked about on Twitter, and we did get an email about it, but do you think Darla shows up? Oh, I so hope so. In some point. So we know that they go to, like, an aquarium. Do you think Darla will be a visitor, if not seen in the background? 
I, I as an Easter egg. May, maybe during like a, a credits um, epilogue where they're going through little scenes during the credits and maybe see Darla at one of these exhibits freaking out over the fishies. You know, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's going to be maybe part of the movie, but maybe a post credits type little scene. Maybe. Yeah. I don't. I don't think she'll be like some yeah looming uh, threat throughout the whole movie. Yeah. May, maybe just like a banging on the glass. Of, I don't know if it's an aquarium or a facility or something. I don't know. Right. Yeah, that's like how too. Toy Story 3 had Zerg show up at the end and the army men. They all kind of showed up there in the epilogue, kind of have their, yeah. their brief moment. I can see that. Yeah. So obviously we had seen the awesome Easter egg already of um, Darla in that picture where it's got Dory with Hank where there, she's kind of looking in there. Um, and Darla's behind it. In, in a photograph. In the picture frame, the same one that's in the dentist's office. So that's already behind there at the Institute. So it'll be oh, interesting to see. could be her, her cameo then. Yeah. We'll see if it goes up again. That could certainly be it. That could certainly be it. All right, so we're rounding up our time here. So I wanted to kind of just also touch base on the news articles that we know of and kind of just go through them for anybody that's listening that may not know the timeline of this. So it was announced, the film was announced from Pixar on April 2nd, 2013. Uh, it was announced via a press release and also, of course, on Ellen. On Ellen. <laughs> I remember that. I thought it was a joke yeah. for a second. Yeah. I know, because Ellen's talked about it so much, all of a sudden it, she, you know, she says it's real, and everybody's like, yeah, yeah. And then it was really real when the press release came out. I really thought it was, it was a gag. Like, it literally seemed like that's what it was. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love that clip, though. Yeah. Finally, something good for Tom Hanks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so then uh, shortly after that, later in the month, uh, somebody had asked Andrew Stanton on Twitter um, who's going to be scoring the movie. Would it be something like uh, Giacchino or would it be Thomas Newman again? And he replied with, Thomas Newman is Nemo. Nemo. So it certainly seems like, unless something went completely crazy, that he would be doing that again. Um, the first broad uh, release of information was in August 2013 uh, where they kind of dug into it a little bit more at the D23 Expo. Uh, this is where they first kind of talked about that Nemo was taking place close to about a year after. Um, there was also a mention at this point in an LA Times article that there was a change, a potential change of story because of the Blackfish documentary uh, and, and the treatment of killer whales in like a SeaWorld type setting. So there was a discussion that um, there was a potential story change due to that. Um, September 18th, of 2013 is when we got the date change because originally it was supposed to be coming out on November 25th of this year which became the good dinosaurs time slot um, and then it obviously moved now to where we're going to expect to see it on in June of 2016. Uh, following <clears throat> September of 2013 we also we jump about a year ahead in December 2014 at this Comic-Con experience in Brazil and this is where Jim Morris is talking about that it's going to take place in a marine bio in, in the Marine Biology Institute of California. Um, <clears throat> just a few months where Nemo left off. Um, also, he says that they're work. He says that they're working on a new software um, that works on. Oh boy, where did I lose my my mention here? Oh, to create schools of fish. Uh, Dory attends, and this is where we might be getting a little bit tying back into the trailer. Uh, today, the teaser, it says, while Dory attends a class trip with Nemo, she begins to remember moments from her past, leading the trio to the Institute, which is more of a rehabilitation center, where they encounter many new characters. So maybe they find out somehow about this Institute and figure, we've got to get Dory there. They'll yeah. help her pull out these memories. Yeah, it's, it's, it's the trio, meaning Marlon, Dory, and Nemo, right? Right. So there, it seems like they're at least with her until the Institute, and at that point it seems like she's captive inside the Institute. That's what it Could be. Like. Could be. I wonder, I wonder if there's like a, an, an escape, escapee from escape. the Institute. Escape! <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll learn how Dory can read. See, she, she must have learned this. That's a refrigerator uh, question. Yeah, yeah, that's a refrigerator question. No, how can Dory read? Blue tanks. Yeah. <laughs> Hippo tanks. <laughs> Hippo tanks. Hippo tanks. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> So that'll be interesting because, um, you know, obviously we see in the, in the image that we saw with Hank and Dory in the tank that she's tagged. He's trying to get that tag from her because he wants to get transferred out of there. So 
it'll be interesting to see how that all plays out. Um, but if gonna... he wants to stay. Hank? Yeah. Uh, Dan, doesn't he want to get out of there? Um, Hank wants to stay because he's scared of the ocean. Yeah. That, that, that he, makes wants, you... he wants to stay, so he right. wants to get the tag. Okay, that's what it is. Got it. Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, excuse me. Plus <laughs> Julie. Yeah, exactly. You know, we are a team here. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, I meant both. <laughs> no, I mean, she doesn't have to call me out. It hurts. Um, so, uh, the year after, May 2015, at the Cannes Film Festival, John Lasser gives some details, uh, also talking about the Institute and that the journey will take place now in the Pacific Ocean. Uh, his quote <clears throat> was that it's an adventure where shipping containers have fallen off boats a frightening encounter with a giant squid and wading past a kelp forest in California's northern coastline. So which we also have seen concept art for. What's that? What's that, Dan? Oh, said which, which which we've seen concept art for that that kelp forest. Uh huh. Exactly. That was one of the first. 2013 concept art pieces. Yeah, years back. Um, but that was the first time that anything had been mentioned as far as shipping containers falling off of boats. And I'm excited to see that. I feel like the giant squid could be an intense scene in the vein of the anglerfish scene. Absolutely. Which could kind of be... Very similar feel to it. Which could kind of be that dark scene in that teaser trailer. It could be um, a shipping container. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Anything is possible at this point. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. That's what you got to love about this. We're spending all this time talking about it. We don't know really anything other than a few little snippets. And it's funny because, like, we, we, we've done this several times. I remember speculating on Monsters University, on Inside Out, on The Good Dinosaur. And then it's funny. It comes and it goes, and then we see the movie, and then it's on DVD, and then we know everything. And it's, like, it's just funny looking back at all that, all that speculation that we used to do on, like, Inside Out, for example, on how little we knew just, you know, earlier this year. I know. I know. It's crazy. <laughs> Uh, continuing on, June 2015 is when they had the Renderman at Annecy in France. We already talked about that with the Renderman improvements. And obviously, August 2015, the D23 Expo again. Um, and Stanton had mentioned in Finding Dory, we can expect to address the one emotionally open-ended issue that remains from the first movie. Where is Dory's family? And with this overly optimistic fish with a short-term memory, or will this overly optimistic fish with a short-term memory loss ever be able to find them again. Her issue has us uh, has also given us an opportunity to travel to many different locations on land and sea. So land is another little clue there. I'd, yeah. I'd be interested to see that. And meet a variety of new sea creatures uh, that expand the world of Nemo, Marlin, and Dory. Exactly. So that's kind of the from... 2013 to now, kind of a high level of the events that it was talked about at and some of the news things. I think today, obviously, with the trailer, the teaser coming out, it was certainly a great culmination of some of that news and, and generated a ton of excitement, like I talked about at the top of the Hangout, that it was a trending topic worldwide today on Twitter uh, for a lot of the day as people kept hearing it and retweeting it and talking about it. So the love for... Nemo, and in fact, I should also say that even it might be trending on Twitter, but it was certainly on our forum. The response that got the most hits within a short period of time uh, of people throwing in their comments about it and then speculating and all those kind of things. So it certainly is seeming to be a pretty darn big hit. Yes. So uh, any closing thoughts or remarks that you had, Dan, on the the teaser trailer that you wanted to kind of cover? Not necessarily. I think I think we covered it quite a bit, but I do want to say that it is a great time to be a Pixar fan, just generally. I'm so excited. I mean, we just we just got done with Inside Out. We're anticipating the dinosaur in like two weeks. We just had the Blu-ray releases at that time forgotten and Inside Out. Now we have Dory's teaser. It's just like, what? <laughs> Pixar overload, and I love it. So I'm excited for this. I'm excited for everything Pixar is doing that has in the works, and uh, bring it on. We're only six months out. Seven months out at this point. I know, it's so crazy. It's so crazy. Jonathan, anything else? Oh, sorry. Go for it. Oh, oh yeah, I was just going to say, Jonathan, anything else from your side from the trailer that you kind of saw or wanted to call out? Uh, yeah, I guess the, uh, the only other thing I don't think we really addressed is I just, um, we, we sort of talked about it, just the obvious, like the, 
attention they paid to just the behavior of the fish that aren't necessarily like the focus of your attention. So just yes. the fish on the sides in the background, like um, my brother they were kind of schooled does. together. Yeah, like there was when Mister when you see the scene with Mister Ray um, and Dory kind of swims up to the left. You can watch them all just sort of back up together in this very natural looking. Like yeah, keep going there. They all just sort of back up. You're like all in one movement together, and that's just like it just looks like you, you don't even notice that, but that's like real fish behavior. You know, that's how they move. <laughs> and, and also, I know you talk about that fish behavior, but in the scene where it's on um, the camera's overhead. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's the other one too. There's just there's the little school sort of all. Uh, yeah, so you've got some over some here. Some over here, and there's so right many. Side. Yeah. There's another group over here, so we'll kind of go back and do like a little. So yeah, you can see some of them as they're moving there, just little subtle mm -hmm. movements as they're going across the right. scene. Yeah, I just I think they just really nailed that. Um, I mean, I've I've never been to the like the Great Barrier Reef, but you know, I've been I've been snorkeling on some pretty tropical reefs, and it they, it just looks like you know picture perfect. And then, um, like my my family or like my brother who does the other half of the channel with me, his. The business he owns is actually an aquarium business, so I've been staring at so many fish for like my entire life, and it's just, <laughs> like, God, this is just, this is just, that's how they do it, and it's like they've just got it down. And wow, this is awesome. We should have uncovered this much earlier. We yeah. had an aquarium expert. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we should have gotten Ben in here. So yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah what the heck? Yeah, Matt, he's gonna no, hide Matt on us. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, buried the lead there a little bit. But. Yeah. <laughs> That's that's awesome. So yeah, I'm glad you pointed that out too because that was something that I did notice but forgot to kind of to call out as far as those individual other fish that were in there. That was definitely a big highlight and, and seeing those extra little details there along with the particles. The particles cannot particles. be overstated. I have a whole new appreciation for them. Thanks, Steve. <laughs> it's all about the sand. The effects team with the sand. You know what? I love the sand too. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. And, right. and I do know that some effects artists that worked on The Good Dinosaur are now working on Dory. Are they? Will there be animated haikus? Do you know? Oh, I did see that. Uh, quite possibly. Man, I was so excited about those in The Good Dinosaur. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the other thing we wanted to talk about before we took off as well was, and we'll do a little sign-off with both of you in just a second, was if you haven't seen and you don't have an Inside Out official from the Studio Store t-shirt, and you'd like to get one, we're doing a giveaway for this. So definitely head to our website, PixarPost.com. Uh, you can go to our YouTube channel, which is uh, our, not YouTube, our Twitter channel, which is just at the Pixar Post. You have to put the the on there for, uh, for Twitter. Uh, you can find our contest link through to it there. We're going to be giving that away. It ends next, uh, or this upcoming Friday. Uh, so definitely if you haven't entered yet and you'd like to, uh, you can certainly get yourself a fancy-dancy official Inside Out. We did this as kind of our kickoff to the uh, release of the Inside Out Blu-ray. All right, well, I'd like to thank everybody for, of course, submitting questions and comments earlier. We had a great time chatting, and uh, Jonathan, I'd really like to spend a, send a special thanks to you for joining and uh, making this your first appearance with us. We hopefully can have you on again in the future. Absolutely, absolutely. I'd be happy yeah. to come on whenever you guys need me. Fantastic. So give like a little give a little plug for your site one more time in case somebody didn't catch us at the beginning uh, about what you do and how people can uh, visit your YouTube channel. Yeah, sure. Uh, I am uh, on YouTube as the Super Carlin Brothers. Uh, my brother and I upload two videos a week. We talk a lot about Pixar, um, a lot of like Pixar theory stuff and how does this connect to this but like today we uploaded the uh, top 10 things to look for in the good dinosaur so there's it's not just not just the theory stuff but a lot of just sort of news and our take on things and things like that but uh yeah youtube.com slash super carlin brothers and you can follow me on twitter and instagram and all that at john carlin fantastic fantastic so and then as always dan we love your site uh we've certainly bought our share of merchandise <laughs> from reading your reviews of things and what's ridiculous is is we talk outside of these hangouts in the Pixar world <clears throat> and there are still times that I'm amazed by things um, with pop-up books that you've talked about with some of your your Bugs Life playset, which was the yeah, one that, that really got me. That was yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That'll forever be mentioned and everyone just it, continue that tradition. Don't because it was the coolest one ever, and we happened to find one that was still sealed in the box, and we got it for like 40 bucks. It was On the eBay. Best. That was a cool find right there. 
Yeah, I mean, that's from 1998, and you found it sealed in the box for 40 Sealed bucks. in the box, and mm-hmm. we have a whole bunch of characters. With yeah, that, you, you ended up getting most of them. Right. Yeah. And the box even has, like, a Kmart, like, price sticker on it. Wow, so. <laughs> that's where I got it, too. Yeah, so, okay, so get, get people a little sign-off uh, for your site, as always, even though I'm sure everybody knows who Dan the Pixar fan is. Not, well, not everybody, but... Um, <laughs> Definitely not anywhere close. But no, it is standthepixarfan.com. I'm just a mega fan of, of Pixar that started a blog a couple of years back. I uh, post an item a day, uh, a Pixar item for my personal collection of, uh, of toys and, and different things like that. And I throw up a review there and, and put up links to different products and try to help people find some cool stuff out there for, for kids and adults. So I hope you enjoy it. What's your, of your personal Pixar collection, what's your favorite item that you own? Um, that That's really tough. I'd have to say anything that you, you have helped me out several times getting things from, from the Pixar Studio store. Anything from that store, because I've never been to Pixar, it's kind of like, it's like my little way of being there without being there. It's kind of like a memento from the store. Um, almost like the closest I can get to it, I guess you could say. <laughs> um, so anything from there, from from the, the Luxo ball to to the, the Inside Out Hawaiian tea um, to and any of those great items um, would be in my top list, I think. Fantastic. Because they're the most elusive. <laughs> Absolutely, but you do certainly have some rare ones out there as well. So uh, for anybody that's looking for just a slice of a, a fun little post that you can pick up every day, go ahead and pe- check out uh, danthepixarfan.com and, of course, the YouTube Super Carlin Brothers uh, channel as well. All right, so signing off and uh, thanking everybody once again, I'm TJ. I'm Julie. And be sure to stay tuned to pixarpost.com all week for the latest Pixar news. Bye-bye.